Hi folks, Steve Nixon here at Logic FX Trading and welcome to our Building Block series where we're learning Elliott Wave Theory as a prelude to the Competent Trader training and mentoring programs. Now everything we've learned so far has been about the rules and guidelines that Elliott gave us for the structure of waves. But as we've seen, the structures vary one from another in both amplitude and time. So is there any way that we can measure these variations to give ourselves a better chance of forecasting what's going to happen next. And that's what we're going to look at here. Elliot used Fibonacci ratios to analyze the proportionate relationship in time and amplitude between one wave and another. Now, the Fibonacci number sequence and ratios is too big a subject for us to cover here in our building block series, but a basic explanation should be enough for you to grasp the significance of Fibonacci ratios and the usefulness of the Fib extension and retracement tools. So let's go. Leonardo Fibonacci de Pisa was a 12th century mathematician who introduced the Arabic decimal system to Europe and they also introduced what has become known as the Fibonacci number sequence. Now here we have the number sequence here. It goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89 and it goes on to infinity. Now we can work out what the next number is in the sequence by adding the previous two numbers. So as we can see here, 1 plus 1 gives us 2, which is the next number. 1 plus 2 gives us 3, which is the next number. 2 plus 3 gives us 5, which is our next number. 3 plus 5 gives us 8, which is our next number, etc. So if we take 55 plus 89, we get 144, which would be our number here. If we add 89 to 144, we get 233. And then we, we add our 144 to 233 and we get 377. Let's just put those in. So there we have it. Now, if we, keep, we can keep doing this on to infinity. So that's really interesting, but how useful is this to us? Well, the truth is that the numbers themselves aren't really what's of interest to us, but the ratios between them. So if we take any two adjacent numbers and we divide one by the other, we get a ratio between them. So if we take 89 and we divide it by the number before 55, we get 1.618818 recurring. So here we have that number down here. And if we do it the other way around, 55 divided by 89, we get 0 0.167977. There we have it there. Now, what's interesting about this is if we take these two numbers, where we have 377 divided by 233, we get 0 0.6180. Now, this number that we have here, the bigger the Fibonacci numbers, the closer this comes to what's known as the golden ratio. So this ratio 1.618 is known as phi, P-H-I, pronounced phi, and it has this symbol, but it's also known as the golden ratio. So why is this so important? Well, some of the greatest mathematical minds of all ages, from Pythagoras and Euclid in ancient Greece, to the medieval Italian mathematician Leonardo da Fibonacci that we're talking about, and the Renaissance astronomer Johannes Kepler, to the present day scientific figures such as Oxford physicist Roger Penrose, have spent endless hours over this simple ratio and its properties. But the fascination with the golden ratio is not just confined to mathematics. Biologists, artists, musicians, historians, architects and psychologists have pondered and debated the basis of its ubiquity and appeal. In fact, it's probably fair to say that the golden ratio has inspired thinkers of all disciplines like no other number in the history of mathematics. Well, now that we know a little bit more about the history and mathematical background to Fibonacci ratios, it's time to answer the big question. How is this important to wave analysis? 
As I said earlier, Fibonacci is a huge subject that would take much more time than we have here to cover. So we'll content ourselves by having a look at the two areas which most apply to structure analysis. And that's Fibonacci retracement and Fibonacci extension. So what is retracement and extension? Well, essentially, when we get a wave coming up and it comes back down again in our correction, this is what we call retracement because price is retracing back into the area that it's already covered. And then we get another movement up, which from the point of view of this is now an extension because price is extending beyond the top of our wave one. So retracement is where we get a correction and extension is where we get price pushing beyond the top of our last high. And yet again, if we were talking about this point, our retracement would be wave four and our extension would be wave five. And when our impulse is complete, then we start looking at how far the correction is going to retrace back into your impulse before it turns and goes long again. And as we always say, remember this is exactly the same in a bear market. Everything is turned in its head. We'll use our generic wave cycle here to have a look at how we go about measuring these retracements and extensions. But first let's have a look at the tools that have been provided for us. We'll start by looking at Fibonacci retracement and we're very, very fortunate in the modern era that everything's been done for us. We don't need to calculate our numbers. We don't need to work out our ratios. Everything's done for us. And in trading view, we have this tool, which is called our retracement tool. And essentially what it does, if we have a wave coming up from here to here, let's say this is our wave one, and we know that we're going to have a retracement of it. Well, this enables us to determine how far down the retracement's going to come. And we know from experience, from having looked at the personality of the pair that we're wearing, how deep this is likely to come. We also know from Elliot that our wave two has a 50% chance of actually completely retracing and giving us a double bottom. But let's have a closer look at the actual tool itself and its settings. If we go into the settings of our Fibonacci retracement, we can each set them up in whatever way suits our own trading style. And here we have our actual ratios, 0 0.236, 0 0.382, 0 0.5, 0 0.618, the golden ratio, 0 0.7, 86, 0.886 and 1. And then we have an extension of a retracement where we get 1.38, 1.5, 1.618, 1.272, which should actually be up there, etc. etc. Now you can either have them as the ratios, as we have here, 0 0.238, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and then the extensions down here, 1.27. But to be honest, I actually prefer to use percentages. So you just click the percentage button and then they come up as percentages. Okay, so that's our retracement tool used to measure how deep a correction is going to come. Let's now have a look at our other tool, which is the Fib extension tool. And in this case, if we have our wave one, let's say we have our wave one coming up like this, and we have our wave two. And now we're actually trying to figure out, well, whereabouts will wave three come? And that's what we use our extension tool for. Because what we can do is, we start at the bottom of wave one, we take it up, we pull it back down, and we have an extension. So in this situation, with wave one coming up, that's 100%. We've had a retracement back down by 50%. And we would then at least say to ourselves, provided we thought that it was going to go long, was going to continue long, we would say to ourselves, well, 
if it's going to go long, our first target's going to be here. Let's turn that green. So we say, well, our first target's there. And our second target, we'll put in there at the 127.2% extension. And why do we pick that as our second? It's the first FIB extension number we come to. And there's a 90% chance that if price extends beyond the 100% here, in other words, we don't get some sort of double top and then come back down again. If it extends beyond there, there's a 90% chance that it's going to reach 127. Okay, so that's our extension tool. And we've had a look at our retracement tool. So let's have a look at them on our generic cycle. So here we have our wave one coming up. And as we know from our Elliott guidelines, there's a 50% chance that wave two will give us a very deep correction. It may even come down and give us a double bottom. And then we'll have to start our wave one count again. So because we know that from our guidelines, if we use our retracement tool, we can say to ourselves, well, first of all, it's wave two, and we know that it can retrace quite deep. So it may even come down as far as 88.6 or even go further. But we also know that 50% of them only retrace in a shallow way before they take off. So what other information do we have that will give us a clue about where to expect our turning point? Well, do you remember that we talked about zigzags and we talked about flats and triangles? Well, we can take a look at what this constitutes by the time it gets to there. So if it's got down to 38.2, and there's five waves. Well, what do we know about that? A correction, an A wave, that starts with five waves isn't complete. Because an A wave is three waves. So we need another two waves. So if we get five waves to there, we know that we're going to get some sort of B wave coming in there. And we're going to get another deeper zigzag down which may end around 161.8. But what Im other information do we have that may give us a clue as to whether it's going to come down to 61.8 in turn, whether it's going to only going to go to 50, or whether it's going to extend even further down? Well, we have our wave equality rule, which basically says that there's a high probability that wave A And wave C will be of equal length. So we just quickly measure that. And we extend it there. We can see that it comes down to 61.8. Now, none of this guarantees us that price is going to turn at 61.8. But the more information we have, the more rules that we can include in our analysis the higher the probability is that price is going to turn around about there. And if this wave 5 came deeper, then the chances are that it would, the price would turn either 78.6 or 88.6 or even at 100%. So can you see how we're starting to build up a picture of how we go about using all of Elliott's rules guidelines and Fibonacci retracement levels to give us a picture of what is likely to happen next with a high degree of probability. So okay, that's our retracement tool. What about our extension tool? So where our extension tool comes into play is where we've had our wave one and We want to figure out where wave 3 will end. Now, what do we know about the relationship between wave 1 and wave 3? Well, what we know about the relationship between all three is that wave 3 can never be the shortest. 
So in all likelihood, wave 3 is going to be actually longer than wave 1. And essentially, with 200%, what we're saying is, from there to there, from there to there, and from there to there, are equal. But remember, we have a retracement in there as well. But if we add this 38.2% there, then obviously then 3 is longer than 1. And we can use it again when we get to the end of wave 3 because we know about relationships between waves 1 and 2 and wave 5. And in this case we have an extension of the complete wave 1, 2 and 3. The extension of it's 127 and we have our wave 5. Now, 127, as we said earlier, there's a 90% chance that it's going to reach there if it breaks the top of 3. Remember, it could be truncated. If it breaks through, there's a 90% chance it's going to get to 127. So it's a safe bet to say, well, I'm going to take a trade and I'm going to let it run until it gets to the 127 and then we'll see what happens after that with a tight stop to make sure that if it does turn that you still keep a lot of your profit. So can you see from that little bit of information that we have there of how important Fibonacci ratios are when combined with all of the other information that we know. Now obviously looking at charts like this and looking at live charts is a completely different thing but we need to know these building blocks first. And that's why I've gone to such lengths to ensure that you know this before you move on to the next stage. And once we get to the more advanced lessons of the Competent Trader, we'll look at this again in much greater detail. In particular, how we use them in conjunction with Elliott Rules and Guidelines to analyse the charts and forecast where price is most likely to go next. If you want to know more about the mathematical origins and significance of Fibonacci number sequence, you'll find a great video on the website under Knowledge Base. That's probably enough information for one day. So we'll end it there and we'll pick up the story again in our last Building Blocks video, where we'll review everything we've learned in the series and bring it all together by doing a step one analysis of the Aussie Kiwi price chart. I'm Stephen Nixon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.